Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is the best selling Mario Kart game of all time, and with it comes a huge speedrunning community. One of its most infamous categories is 48 tracks, 200cc with items turned on. It's an RNG endurance based speedrun where a single blue shell can cost anyone the record. This is the world record history of 48 tracks, 200cc items in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Before we talk about the origins of the first world record, we're going to need a bit of a history lesson first. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe was released in 2017 and is a port of Mario Kart 8, which was released on the Wii U in 2014. Anyone who was speedrunning Mario Kart 8 on the Wii U already had knowledge of the track layouts because the tracks didn't change in the transition to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. However, while the tracks themselves were never changed, many of the underlying mechanics of the game did, and the most notable mechanics that changed were carrying two items instead of one, adding a tier 3 drifting boost called the Ultra Mini Turbo, which is the pink drift, the DLC in Mario Kart 8 became part of the standard tracks in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, and they reworked the stats of vehicle parts and characters. One more quick point is that 200cc was added to time trials in the deluxe version, which made 200cc a much more competitive mode. The speedrunning community decided that these differences were large enough to give Mario Kart 8 Deluxe its own leaderboard. And one other thing to keep in mind is that this 48 track category refers to the original 48 tracks in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, and doesn't include any of the recently added booster tracks. The rules of the category are fairly straightforward. Complete all 48 tracks in any order that you wish. You're allowed to start on any track you like, the items must be set to normal, and the CPU must be set to hard, and it must be done in 200cc, and the courses can be in set order or randomized. The first known record comes from a runner by the name of Uchiha Madao and was set on the release date of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Uchiha Madao had actually done the same speedrun in Mario Kart 8 on the Wii U, and was ranked 11th place at the time, with 1 hour, 40 minutes, and 49 seconds. So he already had an idea of the track layouts, and he just needed to adapt to the other changes in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Because this record was so early on, he didn't have the fastest kart combination unlocked nor did the community know what the best combination was at this point. Regardless, Uchiha Madao went on to show everyone the first ever world record for this speedrun in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. One hour, 39 minutes, and 17 seconds. While it was the first world record to be set, Uchiha Madao quickly learned that running with items on in Deluxe was far more chaotic than it was in Mario Kart 8 Wii U due to the dual item slots. Now because this category is quite lengthy, going through how each runner performed each and every track would be cumbersome. But what I can tell you, however, is the number of mishaps each runner had during their runs. Mishaps include falling off a track, running into a stage hazard, burning out at the start of the race, etc. This would essentially tell us how well a runner performed during the run, and if a runner had good driving lines and was careful enough not to fall off any tracks, then they would save time. I can also tell you the number of times each runner was hit by any single item. Bananas would cost you approximately 2.5 seconds, green or red shells approximately 3 seconds, 
blue shells approximately three and a half seconds, and lightning approximately five seconds. Now, these time losses from the items are on average. You could lose more or less time depending on how and where you were hit by the item. And this would tell us if the runner had good or bad RNG. And so if we add up the time lost due to mishaps and the time lost due to items, we can get an idea of how well the runner did. In Uchiha Madao's world record, he was hit by 90 different items, resulting in a time loss from items of 5 minutes and 10 seconds. He also had 34 mishaps, which resulted in a time loss of a minute and 49 seconds, totaling a time loss of 6 minutes and 59 seconds. Now, this time loss doesn't include the lost time from not using any of the no item shortcuts, also known as NISCs, which are crucial in 200cc. Because you're going a lot faster than 150cc, you're able to do unintended shortcuts without the use of mushrooms. Many of these NISCs can save you seconds overall. However, many NISCs in 200cc can be challenging and may actually lose you time if it's not executed correctly. Uchiha Madao played it safe for his run and not utilizing many of the NISCs, and he would do the same for his second record too. A couple of days later, Uchiha Madao had improved his record. Unfortunately, he had slightly worse RNG, going from being hit by 90 items up to 93 this time around. His rate of mishaps, on the other hand, went from 34 down to 24. Overall, he lost about 6 minutes and 45 seconds total from these, which was a 14 second improvement from his previous record. His overall time improvement was about 34 seconds, so he did have better driving lines than his previous record. And this likely came from a faster cart combination because, again, he didn't utilize many of the NISCs. And at this point, you're likely wondering what cart combination is the best, but we'll get to that later on. It wasn't long before Uchiha Madao's time was beaten. It was only one day later before the record was absolutely crushed. And it was by a person who would go to be considered a pioneer for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Say hello to Aeon Frodo. Aeon Frodo was a speedrunner of Mario Kart 8 on the Wii U and was tied for 5th place on the leaderboards at the time. When she finally got to play Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, she would go ahead and beat Uchiha Madao's record on her first full run attempt with a time of 1 hour, 37 minutes and 10 seconds. Unfortunately, there isn't any video evidence of this run today, but her second full run attempt brought the record down again to 1 hour, 35 5 minutes and 20 seconds. That's over 3 minutes faster than Uchiha Madao's. How does this compare to Uchiha Madao's 1 hour and 38 minute run? Well, in Aeon Frodo's 1 hour 35 minute run, she was hit by 80 items, losing her 4 minutes and 47 seconds. She had just 6 mishaps, losing her a mere 18 seconds. And in total, she had about a 5 minute and 6 second total time loss which was a huge improvement over Uchiha Madao. Because the rules allowed the runner to start on any track they wanted, Aeon Frodo would start her runs on GameCube Yoshi Circuit. This would start her at the beginning of the DLC tracks. The reason Aeon Frodo wanted to start with the DLC tracks was because the DLC tracks were considered some of the hardest in the game. That way, she could get through the harder tracks first and not have to worry about them later on in the run. Aeon Frodo generally had cleaner driving lines and utilized more NISCs than Uchiha Madao, saving her lots of time. Eight days later, she managed to bring down the record once again to 1 hour, 34 minutes and 50 seconds. One of the strategies she adopted was item manipulation. In previous Mario Kart games, the items you receive are based on what position you are in the race. In Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, the items you receive are instead 
based on how far away you are from the person in first place. But when you're in the lead, you're only eligible for five different items. A coin at 70% chance, bananas at 15% chance, a green shell at 9% chance, a babam at 4% chance, and a super horn at 2% chance. Speedrunners soon realized that the coin item behaved a little differently than the rest of the items. They found that if you already have a coin in your first item slot, you can never receive a coin in your second item slot. This means that if you have a coin in your first item slot, you're guaranteed an item to defend yourself in the second item slot, which would then increase your odds of getting a super horn, which is an item used to defend yourself from a blue shell. This allowed runners to minimize the number of times they would get hit by a green, red, or blue shell. The strategy was to keep the coin in the first item slot and have a defensive item in the second slot. The reasoning for this because if a CPU uses the boo item, boo will steal whatever you had in your first item slot. If you were to have a defensive item in your first slot, boo would steal it, and you would become defenseless and vulnerable to any incoming shells. Aeon Frodo used this method of item manipulation, and it was the reason why she was on top of the leaderboards. In Aeon Frodo's time of 134.50, she was only hit by 61 items, which was much better than her previous run. Being hit by 61 items and having 14 mishaps, she only had an RNG mishap time loss of approximately 4 minutes and 40 seconds. However, even when you're trying your best to defend yourself, sometimes RNG does get the best of you. Oh my god. Yeah. Great red shells already. I'm, I've lost 9 seconds. 12. I can't, like, I can't get any protection against shells. <laughs> Despite the horribly unlucky Piranha Plant slide, Aeon Fredo managed to still beat the record by another 17 seconds. And we can tell that she drove much cleaner because she was hit by 72 items throughout her run and had 11 mishaps, totaling an RNG mishap time loss of 5 minutes and 1 second, which was 21 seconds more than her previous record. This record would stand for the next couple of weeks. There was still lots of time to save with better RNG, cleaner driving lines, and utilizing more NISCs. By this time, most speedrunners for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe had unlocked all of the vehicle parts and discovered the best character and kart combination. It was found that the best combo to use was any of the following. For characters, it was Donkey Kong, Roy, or Waluigi. For carts, it was the Biddy Buggy or Mr. Scooty. For tires, it was Azure Rollers or just plain rollers. And for gliders, it was either the cloud, the flower, the paper, or the parachute glider. In Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, the mini turbo stat was buffed, and any of these combinations had high mini turbo stats, while still having a high ground speed. Having a high mini turbo stat would give you the following benefits. It increases the duration of your speed boost, it makes it quicker to charge up your drifts from blue to orange to pink, and it increases the speed of your speed boost. These combos would become the meta in not only speedrunning, but in online play and some time trials as well. While we're talking about speed, it became more and more important to collect 10 coins as fast as possible in every track. The reasoning for this is that when you have 10 coins, your maximum speed increases. If we take a look at the cart combination stats, having 10 coins is the equivalent of adding 5 more bars to your speed. And to put that into perspective, it's about a 5-6% to increase to your top speed. If you obtain 10 coins quickly, you have that top speed for a longer period of time, thus completing the tracks faster. A new runner would step up to challenge Aeon Frodo's record of 134.33. He was also a Mario Kart 8 Wii U speedrunner, and holding the 3rd place position in 48 tracks, so he definitely had some experience under his belt. He decided it was time to take on 48 tracks in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, 
and would go on to optimize and monopolize the record for the next year. This is Mistwalker MX-7. Mistwalker had the record set at an incredible time of 1 hour, 31 minutes, and 26 seconds. In a year of lowering his time, he brought it down 3 minutes and 7 seconds. A portion of it came from better RNG and fewer mishaps than Aeon Frodo. Mistwalker was hit by 59 items and had just 9 mishaps. His total time loss from RNG and mishaps was 4 minutes and 20 seconds. The majority of his time saves were simply from just better and tighter driving lines, and utilizing more of those no item shortcuts. It just goes to show how important these are, because in theory, the faster you complete a track, the less time you'll have to be hit by an item, assuming you're playing a consistent defensive game. Mistwalker was very good at this and was considered one of the top runners of the time and the community was continually blown away by the cleanliness and consistency of his driving lines. However, at the same time, Mistwalker had a rival. And in fact, everyone at the time had this one same rival. It didn't matter what category in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe you were playing, it seemed like you were up against this one single person. He was dominating the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe leaderboards, and it didn't look like there was an end to it. This is Draco 655. Draco was a new runner to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, and by that, I mean that he's never had previous experience with Mario Kart 8 on the Wii U. He was a very fast learner and he quickly became the most decorated Mario Kart 8 Deluxe speedrunner, holding over 30 world records on speedrun.com. This spanned not only on the 200cc categories, but the 150cc categories as well. And further to that, not only was it in the items category for both of those CCs, it was also in the no item categories as well. He was everyone's rival. Draco and Mistwalker had been competing for the 48 track record for quite some time, but Mistwalker had always been the one to get the faster time. Until one day, when Draco was on a run that had not started very great. But as the run continued, he soon realized that this was the luckiest run that he ever had, and ever will have.
1 hour, 31 minutes, and 6 seconds. Draco had beaten the record by 20 seconds. Not only that, but he had the luckiest run anyone had ever had at that point, and anyone ever would have for years to come. He was hit by only 52 items, losing him 3 minutes and 33 seconds. He also only had 6 mishaps, losing him 20 seconds, for a grand total RNG mishap time loss of 3 minutes and 53 seconds, the lowest of anyone up until that point. Even Draco himself said that his RNG was just way too good, and he was right. This record would stand for the longest time the category would ever see. It stood uncontested for nearly two years. While we're on the topic, let's talk a little bit more about RNG in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. We have a sense of what is good and bad RNG, but what about perfect RNG? Is it possible to play through all 48 tracks without being hit by a single item? If we look at Draco's 13106, he had 11 perfect RNG tracks. What would it take to have 48 of those? I couldn't calculate this on my own, so I partnered up with Basic, a Mario Kart 8 data expert. I provided him with all the data I collected for this video. And with this data, Basic was able to calculate some staggering probabilities. Assuming that you're able to play on a world record level and many other assumptions that Basic had made, the chances of having a perfect 48 track RNG run is about 1 in 200,000. Billion, billion, billion. That's a lot. Let's put those odds into perspective. If all 8 billion people on planet Earth were capable of playing Mario Kart 8 Deluxe at world record levels, and all 8 billion people were immortal and could play for 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year, with no time to sleep, eat, drink, or have any sort of break, someone would eventually get a perfect RNG 48 track run in 120 quadrillion years. Considering that the universe is estimated to be about 13.7 billion years old, I think it's safe to say that a perfect RNG 48 track run will not happen anytime soon. If you want to learn more into how Basic calculated these numbers and what assumptions he made, go check out his video he made that goes into more depth. The link is in the description below. Throughout the next little while when Draco's record stood, the 48 tracks 200cc no items category started to gain more attention. The no items category is generally considered a more competitive and skill based category because runners don't have to worry about the chaotic RNG of items. That's not to say that the items category isn't skill based, but no items leans more towards skill because the only time losses you experience are the ones that you make yourself. When playing 48 tracks in a row, it requires a ton of focus, precision, and endurance. One runner that was making his way up to the no items leaderboard was Pianist15, who was ranked second place at the time. Because the no items category is pretty much based on skill, these runs were often more optimized than the item category. The item categories at the time mostly relied on consistency because you never knew what kind of RNG you would be dealing with. And so, Pianist15 decided to try out the 48 track items category to see what he would be up against. He found himself on a very good run, a run so good it began to challenge Draco's world record. It was so close to Draco's world record, it's better just to show you.
Both Draco and Pianus had a time of 1 hour, 31 minutes, and 6 seconds. Pianus would come out on top by just 38 frames. A run that's an hour and a half long and it comes down to the last 0.6 seconds of the race. And in case you missed it, not only was it close time wise, but Pianus had a blue shell coming towards him on the last track, on the last lap, on the last turn. And if it wasn't for the super horn that he had, it would have not been a world record. That's how close it was. Draco's reign had ended and Pianist's new record would start the new era in the 48 track items category. Here's why. As we discussed earlier, Draco's record had incredible luck and not very many mishaps, losing him only 3 minutes and 53 seconds. Pianist's record had worse RNG and more mishaps, he was hit by 57 items and had 7 mishaps, losing him a total of 4 minutes and 17 seconds, 24 seconds more than Draco's. Most of the time saved came from the fact that Pianist was simply just better at driving. Over the last 2 years of Draco's reign, driving in general had improved and new strategies for driving lines and NISCs were found. It was just a matter of successfully implementing these in a 48 track run. If you had somewhat decent RNG, you could make a competitive run. While the record of 131.06 seemed daunting, it wasn't unbeatable. Many more of the no item runners saw this and began to run the items category to push the record even further. Pianus 15 had done it. He managed to get the first ever sub 130 run at 1 hour, 29 minutes, and 47 seconds. To quote his own notes, the sub 130 was a far fetched dream for so long, but all it took was a single 53 second PB to achieve it. And it was a close one too. Just like last time, he happened to be chased by a blue shell on the last track, on the last lap, on the last turn. Thankfully, he was able to outrun it. His RNG and mishaps were not too shabby, being hit by 56 items and having 9 mishaps, totaling an RNG mishap time loss of 4 minutes and 11 seconds. He did state though that his driving wasn't as consistent as it could have been, however it was enough to land him a new world record. Or was it? Pianist got his 129.47 on May 19th of 2021. The previous world record of 130.12 held by Eji573 happened about 4 months earlier on January 24th, 2021. In between these 4 months, there was a timing rule change that applied to all top level runs in Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. You see, since the beginning of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe speedrunning, all runs were timed by RTA, which stands for Real Time Attack. What this means is that you time your speedrun like a stopwatch. You start it when you begin your run, and you stop it at the end of your run. While this timing method generally worked fine, it did give certain players an advantage over other players due to the variable nature of loading times. 
Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is available in both a physical cartridge version and a digital version that's stored in either the Nintendo Switch's internal storage or on a micro SD card. When playing Mario Kart 8 Deluxe on a cartridge, it would typically load tracks slower than a digital copy would. When you're playing 48 tracks in a row, having slower loading times for each track adds up. Not only that, but loading times are not consistent throughout different Nintendo Switches. You could have two different Nintendo Switches that both run Mario Kart 8 Deluxe on a cartridge and they could have different loading times. The same thing would happen with digital copies too. Since these loading times vary so much, it's tough to give an exact answer of how much time you save by having a digital copy versus a physical copy. But it's generally said around the community to save around a full minute of time just by playing on a digital copy of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Having a minute advantage on a 90 minute run can certainly be unfair to top level runners who play on a physical copy. This is why the timing rules had changed for top level runs. The rankings on the leaderboard no longer were sorted by RTA timing. It was now sorted by IGT, which stands for in-game timing. A Mario Kart 8 Deluxe speedrunner and moderator, Vike MK, created an auto splitter, which automatically times your run as you play. Not only that, but it times your run in IGT and not in RTA. So what it does is time your run only whenever you were actually racing on a track. It would automatically remove loading times from the equation entirely. This put everyone on an even playing field, whether playing on a physical or digital copy of the game, or having a Nintendo Switch that loaded tracks faster or slower. So the question becomes, was Pianist 15's 12947 RTA actually faster than Edgy 573's 13012 RTA? Edgy 573's 13012 RTA would translate to a 1 hour, 9 minutes, and 57 second IGT. Pianist 15's 12947 RTA would translate to a 1 hour, 9 minute, and 44 second IGT. So yes, it was definitely a new world record by 13 seconds. All top level runs going forward would now use IGT instead of RTA. For the rest of this video, I'm going to continue to display the RTA time for the remainder of the records. I will place the IGT time underneath so that you'll be able to see both. But just remember that runs are now sorted by IGT. And it only took a few months before Pianist record would be beaten. A new runner to the category by the name of Desi200 was able to improve on Pianist's record by about 6.5 seconds. Interestingly enough, Desi200 was able to tie Draco in the fewest number of times being hit by items at just 52 items. However, Desi200 had about 8 mishaps, totaling an RNG mishap time loss of 4 minutes and 1 second, which is still the best we've seen since Draco's godly RNG run but it wasn't better than Draco's godly RNG run. What makes this world record particularly interesting is that Desi plays competitively online and he knows how to handle items. He got this world record on his first full attempt. Six months later, a very talented runner joined the 48 track leaderboards and his name is Pi. Pi is a time trialer and time trialers traditionally don't compete in speedruns on speedrun.com. Instead, they speedrun individual tracks via the time trial game mode. These players are considered the best of the best and can spend hundreds of hours on perfecting just one track. They know the ins and the outs of every single track 
and have the best driving lines in the world. These are the same people you see on the leaderboard when you play in the time trial game mode. Pai decided to try out the 48 track items category, and just on his 15th attempt, he managed to get this run. A 129.22 RTA or a 109.28 IGT. His driving lines were incredible. His RNG, well, maybe not so much. He was hit by 59 items and had 7 mishaps, totaling an RNG mishap time loss of 4 minutes and 17 seconds. Even Pi himself said, It's a very unoptimized category, but it's hard to get good enough item luck to optimize this. And he was right because now we find ourselves in the exact opposite situation from three and a half years ago. Draco had incredible RNG with mediocre driving lines. Pi had mediocre RNG but with incredible driving lines. We have seen crazy levels of RNG before and it's only a matter of time until we finally see incredible RNG with incredible driving lines. But until then, we're just gonna have to wait. And that's where the video was supposed to end. You see, I finished this script on June 1st, 2022. The only section of the script I was missing was the bit about the probability of a perfect RNG run. On June 3rd, just two days later, I reached out to Pianist15 asking him if he had any no reset runs of 48 tracks items 200cc. The reason I was asking him this was because we needed more data to calculate the probability of a perfect RNG run. Unfortunately, he didn't have any videos laying around, but he did say that, I can do one today though if that would be helpful. Well, not only was it helpful, but it put him back on top of the leaderboards. It was a 4 second IGT improvement over Pies. Pianist 15 was hit by 53 items and had 5 mishaps, totaling an RNG mishap time loss of 4 minutes and 1 second, but it still wasn't as good as Draco's RNG mishap time loss of 3 minutes and 53 seconds, but it did tie Desi 200's 4 minute and 1 second time loss. But Pianist 15 wasn't finished there. RNG is one of the many wonders of speedrunning. And generally speaking, if something can happen, it will eventually happen. We've seen good RNG in the past, and if it's happened before, it can happen again. 
Whether you're trying to get the 1 in 8 chance of no hands in Super Mario Bros. 3, the 1 in 5000 chance in God Glider Strats in Blue Yourself, or just getting really good RNG in 48 tracks 200cc with items turned on, it's going to happen. And finally, it did. Pianist 15 had done it. The first ever sub 129 RTA and the first ever sub 109 IGT. The dream of incredible RNG with incredible driving lines was now a reality. Pianist 15 was hit by just 50 items and had 8 mishaps, totaling an RNG mishap time loss of 3 minutes and 48 seconds, the lowest anyone has ever done. And that's where the record stands today. Thank you for watching.